Triple your pattern making in three easy steps. Step one is scan, step two, convert to CAD, and step three, flatten 3D to 2D. This is exact flat, scan to pattern, and we'll show you how. Hi, this is Ethan Donald from Exact Flat. I'm the CEO of Exact Flat, and I'm here with Peter Warburton from Crayaform, and we are going to be demonstrating how to use the Peel 3D scanner for upholstered furniture. Peter, what is the first step in the process for scanning an object like this? Okay, this object, uh, our scanner can scan on three things: texture, color, if you like, um, geometry, which if it has geometry, and it can also scan on targets. Now, geometry doesn't um, it has to be a reasonable amount of interesting geometry. So if I try and scan, um, uh, say, a soccer ball, it's perfectly round, it looks the same for any direction. I could probably scan this without targets, but honestly your life will be so much easier if you do it with targets that why, why bother? So we're going to put targets on this um, chair. So, so Peter, then, uh, the, you, you said the geometry, so because we have like sort of flat, undifferentiated surface, this is where we need to break the surface up, and that's where the targets come in, is that correct? Yeah, well, there's no geometry to be seen there. It can't tell if it's moved in this direction or this direction because it's flat. So yes, targets tell it where, where you're looking at this chair from, and that enables it to keep track, which is what we used on the um, wheel hub earlier. Okay. It's same, right. same, same technique. So this, even though this is a, a, a piece of furniture, this would apply to automotive, this would apply to insulation covers, this would apply to any type of object that's going to be covered in fabric. So what's the, what's the process for putting the, 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 the targets on? Is there some sort of criteria that we need to follow? Yeah, pretty much. It, first of all, they have to be random, which is great because humans can't put things in lines, so it's, it's automatically random if you put them on. Um, there were two boxes of targets in your box when you unpacked it, and basically the rule of thumb is about four under a hand span. So I'll show you the sort of thing you do. The box actually has a neat little technique where you pull the, pull the tape and it dispenses targets. So this is a sort of typical target spacing and so it's going to take a little while to do this chair. I should point out that you shouldn't put targets on high curvature edges and you shouldn't put them near to the edge of something. Um, there's not really an edge here but the scanner needs a couple of millimeters around each target. So don't put them right on the edge of a table or, or something like that. It won't work. Um, so you would not recommend on these seam no. lines or these edges well, here or don't put, here? Don't put them on the seam lines because you're going to want to pick those seam lines later in the software. So it, all it is is to help the scanner keep track of things. And that's about the density of points. In fact, you could probably get away with a few less. But we're going to cover the chair and get back to you. So now we're going to have a, my assistant, Pierre, <laughs> to do the scanning for us while uh, Eaton and I discuss the techniques used in the scanning. So off we go. We'll start on an easy bit that's light colored. Um, the automatic shutter is in use, so it's adjusting the shutter itself. And you can see the speed at which it's acquiring the surface. It's pretty fast. And we're not using texture because we don't need it. And as you can see, and it doesn't have to be exact either, because I see he's kind of reaching to reach the top there. Yeah. Like it's a, there's a variable range of distance which is acceptable to pick up the, the, the scan. Yeah, it's about 30 centimeters plus or minus 10. Okay. And as I say, keep an eye on that bar. On the, and if you're too close, it will tell you, and if you're too far, it will tell you. And in fact, there's also lights on the back of the scanner that do the same thing. If it's green, it's good. If it's red, you're too close. Um, so there's a couple of ways of looking at the, the, the distance you are from the object. Okay, but I have a question. So I see some of the targets, like this one right here, is not exactly flat. Uh, it's kind of raised up a little bit. This one right here is raised up a little bit. So is the scan going to accommodate for that and assume it's a flat surface, or is it going to pick the target? It is going to. It's going to assume it's a flat surface and fill it in, but it's going to fill it in at the level of the target. So you should try and just push down the target. When, when you apply them, make sure they're stuck. And as I said, when we were unboxing, there is a box of very sticky targets. There's a box of ordinary sticky targets. 
on something like this, which is loose, you know, felty, you should probably use the high stick targets so that they don't pop off. As, and try not to put them on high radius curves because that will make them pop off. Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to uh, scan the target surface. I'm just going to switch to uh, the shutter time a little bit higher. Yeah. When you're trying to scan something that is both black and white, like this chair, the automatic shutter is probably going to be fooled. And there you can go to, while you're scanning in fact, you can go to manual shutter and adjust the shutter speed. So now he's jacked up the shutter speed, which you can see in the bottom right of the screen. And it's now acquiring fine the black part of this fabric. So this is what you do if you had a, a motorcycle seat or something like this in multiple colors or, or very different shade. Um, you go to manual shutter. And it, you're always free to play with it. It doesn't make any, you know, it's not going to ruin the scan for you. So you can adjust to manual shutter halfway through the scanning process? Yes, you can. And back to automatic. So if it's not, so for example, like, you know, more of a dark black and white, say it's like a brown or something, and you, you need to, you, you can try scanning it, and if it doesn't work well, you can just scan right over top of that with the, with the manual shutter? Yes, you could. Um, you, you'll see if it's not acquiring any surface when you're over it at the right distance, it's probably a shutter problem and you should go and adjust the shutter. So you'll get immediate feedback on that? Yeah. 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 Now you can see that Pierre's having to reach to get to the top of this chair. Because the targets are on the chair, we can actually just tip it over and get to bits that he can't reach. And you can see the great thing about this one is we can turn it around. But otherwise, you're going to have to be walking around this chair. Have you got the top? Do you? I uh, know we could do it. Okay. Well, just taking care not to move any targets. We'll just drop it down a bit. It doesn't have to be stable. Are you okay? We'll, we'll put it on the side. Yeah. And well, I will just drop it down, down all the way. Down. Okay. <laughs> this and then you can complete the parts that you couldn't reach before and if it moves a little bit like I'm not that's holding it perfectly okay. stable that's okay watch this it doesn't make any difference because of those targets so it's immune to vibration what it mustn't do is change its own shape so if you were trying to scan my arm and then I did this that wouldn't work right right but this is so the relative of, geometry must stay consistent, not yes. necessarily the position of it then? That's it. That's exactly it. Okay. So if you are scanning somebody's arm, you would have to tell them to hold still or get them to rest it some way, yeah. um, and, and then they would scan, but yeah. they, they, couldn't, they couldn't move well, it. Well, because you're creating two different models. Right. This is really useful, this turntable. <laughs> well, I would expect that if you're doing a lot of scanning, you would set up your scanning environment so that you have all these Absolutely. Um, workflow um, time savers, right? Like you put it on a turntable, you'd mount it at a height that made sure you didn't have to reach yeah. or bend over too much or that type of thing. Or if you had to flip it over, you could you could do that. So for, you know, um, depending on what your application is, depending on what the scanning is, you'd set your workflow up. And this has actually had zero effort in workflow. We just kind of plop on the table and started scanning and it's still going pretty quickly. Yeah, you, it scans really fast. It takes a little while to put on the targets and you're going to want to remove them at the end. But make sure you scan, check your scan before you remove the targets because once you remove the targets, it's more difficult to go back and, and complete anything that you've missed. Okay, so we're already finished. Just putting up some remaining holes. So I do have a question then. Um, this is where the seam locations of the upholstered fabric cover would go. Yeah. And I notice that he's doing a scan in, in this particular <coughs> mode here. How would you pick up these locations um, so that you could have, um, you know, an, an accurate representation of where you want those cut lines to be? Well, you will see them in the mesh. You'll see them in the mesh. Oh, okay. yeah. That, that's enough to be seen in the mesh. If if it's not, then you may you may be need to acquire texture. If, for instance, it's uh, a continuous fabric, but it's a different color, and mm -hmm. you want to cut on that, then you should be acquiring texture as well. 
okay? But that will take you a bit more time. So this is enough to, we'll have a look at the mesh afterwards, but um, let's go. Now that's quite a lot of triangles we've just acquired, so there's a little bit of time to post-process it. Are we done? Have you stop? Yeah, I just stopped the scan. Okay, right so now. okay, that's the post-processing time. It's taking the mesh that it was showing you and actually perfecting it from all the uh, <coughs> images it took. So this is the conversion from a point cloud to a mesh. Is that what's happening right now? Yes, except it's already building the mesh when it's scanning. It's just refining it. We we don't actually work with point clouds. Okay. It's making the mesh as it scans. Okay. So if you want to zoom in on that scene and just check that we can see it on, say, the left arm or the right arm. Uh, yeah, you can see that scene. It's not perfect. We are showing it at two millimeter resolution right now. Oh. Yeah, it's okay. That's enough to pick. I think that's enough to pick your shape. Is, yep. is yep. it okay for you? I would say it is. Yeah. So you mentioned two millimeter resolution. Can you just talk a little bit about resolution, high okay. versus low, and sort of optimal? Pierre's going to turn on the mesh, and I'm going to show you the mesh that's associated with that surface. And we're going to zoom in because it's a lot of. Tri okay. Those are all the triangles. Keep zooming, keep zooming. So that's your mesh. So it's a very dense mesh. It's a very dense mesh. In fact, you don't need it that dense. No. So there's a couple of things you can do. You can, um, that's two millimeters. So don't go setting your scanner so to one millimeter. So the resolution you you're need. talking about is the polygons on the mesh. Yes. Not necessarily the, the mesh resolution. The mesh resolution, okay. Not the accuracy. Right. They're two different things. So the accuracy is 0.1 millimeters. Okay. The resolution is what you need it to be and honestly, that's plenty. In fact, it's overkill. And I'll show you later how to decimate that mesh to make a file size. What's the, can you show us the triangle count um, on yep. this chair? Yeah. So down on the... Nearly a million. How many? A million. Yeah, nearly 9,000. Uh, okay, so there's, there's nearly a million triangles on this chair. It's not got any intense geometry on it, so you, in fact, could do this Describe this chair perfectly with a hundred thousand triangles, or even less, or even less, because even less, it's and, flat surfaces. For the and you part. don't want to be pumping a great big mesh into exact flat and um, giving it indigestion uh, for, for no reason at all. So we will show you later how to decimate that mesh down to a reasonable level and still maintain accuracy, because we have a function that will make it put big triangles where it's flat and small triangles where there's details. It's the equivalent of um, JPG in a, in a picture. It's compression, but without losing any um, accuracy. So we'll show you that later on, but you, what I'm showing here is that you do not need to scan at one millimeter. Two millimeters is plenty. You could probably scan at four on something like this and still be fine. And so that's just a matter of finding out what works for you. Yeah. Because this is a balance of resolution and um, accurate results, but also time. You don't want to have to take too much time to do this, right? I mean, yeah. So I'm assuming that the higher resolution meshes cause processing overhead and, and a bunch of things that to sort of complicate yeah. your workflow. Mm -hmm. So you want to get this to be optimal, and that's just a matter of scanning at a high resolution, the middle and the low, and then uh, seeing what works. Yeah, so that, that's, that's part of your first introduction to the scanning process. Yeah, when you get the feel for it, you'll you'll know that you don't need to scan it at one, one millimeter. But, right. Um, if you're doing something detailed, you might. <laughs> But because this might be a common mistake. <coughs> higher is always higher resolution would be, I guess, universally seen as better. Yes, but we're, that and it's is not, not the case. case. Okay. Yeah, absolutely not. And indeed, if you're getting to five million triangle counts on your computer, you're probably sucking up a load of RAM. You're slowing it down, and it will almost certainly be difficult to use in other software because it's just such a big file. So, okay. so we don't want to make this seem complicated. It's a process of just getting to know the scanning like the scanner mm -hmm. and how to scan and setting it up properly and then it's done. You don't really have to go through this Absolutely. Through this uh, sort of like decision making uh, yeah. subsequent attempts. Yeah. And you also have to, to look what you're uh, looking for. So I've got some holes in the in the scan. You get to ask yourself, do I need those data? I, we get a fill hole algori algorithm that we can use later, but if it's really detailed that you have, you want to, uh, to have, uh, you can always go back because I'm missing some spot. I can always go back and keep go scanning uh, if I would like to to have uh, more. Oops, just put it back in my other 
shirt. So that's an option that could be uh, could be done as well. And I just want to point out, even though the scanner is picking up um, what may be considered undesired artifacts, like for example, these wrinkles right here, and these wrinkles right here, those things can easily be accommodated when you go into the flapping process. So those are not, you, you need not worry about that. You'll still get very smooth surfaces that when you actually post the chair, they'll fit perfectly. Yeah, it's cap capturing reality. So if there's wrinkles, it will capture the wrinkles. Yes. This concludes part one on how to scan your part. In the next section, we cover how to convert your scan to 3D CAD. It's part of our video series on how to triple your pattern making in three easy steps using exact flat scan to pattern. It's the faster, better, cheaper, and easier way to create patterns for all your products. Be sure to check out our next video. You can also contact us at your convenience for a demo or to learn more. We'll show you how.